Good afternoon. Uh, just for notice, it has stopped raining. Um, just for notice, I'm going to be doing a few videos, or a couple of videos, on non-perishable unmanned combat aerial systems. For the next couple of videos, including this video, um, I'll be doing one on Tyrannus, which is this one, and the other one will be on BAE Systems Concept 1 and 2, which may be, you know, it may have to be broken up. First off, I think it's probably just better to go over what an unmanned aerial vehicle is meant to do and what it should excel in. So, so far, the role of the UAV has been mainly ISR. ISR is the combination of intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. So gathering intelligence, surveilling areas, uh, and recon over enemy territory. A combat UAV adds targeted attacks into that mix, or target making at the very least. So generally, that's precision bombing or missile strike. UAVs tend to be slow and stealthy, below Mach 1 certainly, and they operate at a very high altitude in order to maximise the aforementioned function objectives. If one is thinking about the predecessors to UAVs, so that's um, recon planes, you've got famous stuff like the U-2 and the camera, it all flies incredibly high, both to stay out of enemy sight and to gain maximum view of the battle space. I'll get to the point now. Um, as you can see from the title, in this video I'm going to be talking about the Future Technologies Unmanned BAE Systems Aerial Combat Vehicle, that is a mouthful, Tyrannis. So, it's an experimental unmanned system in the air. Tyrannis, the name, comes from the Celtic God of Thunder. The Thunder God Tyrannis is associated with the eight-spoked wagon wheel, the unmanned vehicle by the same name with being suave both in looks and in the team that developed it, that being the Strategic Unmanned Air Vehicles Experiment. So from the beginning, Tyrannus really has been a display, more than anything, of the UK maintaining sovereign uh, unmanned aircraft construction ability, because generally Britain, while it, it has collaborated on multiple unmanned vehicle construction projects like uh, C889 Midge um, and the BAE Systems Phoenix, Britain only really ever manufactures recon UAVs that have actually gone into service, other than, you know, parts it produces for US drones. So the importance of the Tyrannus project is that it's not purely a recon UAV. It may be stealthy and have brilliant reconnaissance ability, as all drones should, but it has two internal weapons bays. And clearly, it's a massive step up from BAE's Mantis, uh, which is something that looked more like the Protector drone. Its next generation uh, stealth and unmanned systems for Tyrannus, it's something that Mantis simply couldn't match, with only six external hardpoints and, you know, no internal base. Up until now, for combat unmanned aircraft, the, US, the UK even has relied on imports from the US. So the more famous ones, uh, the Reaper drone, now called Protector, and I think at some point uh, the Predator drone, which you'll know from Call of Duty. In regard to the project itself, Tyrannus, its partners are BAE Systems, Rolls-Royce, GE Aviation, and Kinetic, along with the MOD, of course, so major players. So, to go over what's happened so far with the Tyrannus project, Tyrannus began production in 2007, and assembly began in 2008. In 2009, interestingly enough, the MOD had to deny that Tyrannus was flying overhead after a UFO had been claimed to have been spotted near a local damaged wind turbine up north. The initial development of Tyrannus cost £143 million. The unveiling of the initial development took place in 2010, and soon after, ground tests begun, preparing it for its first flight, which was, due to complications, delayed until 2013. But, once the prototype was airworthy, it had a 17,600 pound takeoff weight, similar to that of the training aircraft BAE Systems Hawk, um, and it flew for 15 minutes, give or take. In any case, 
it has far surpassed expectations and flown at various speeds for times up to an hour, and despite being 32% over budget, as generally military projects unfortunately often tend to be, the project is thought to be a pretty great success. In 2014, despite my view that Tyrannus is probably superior, the programme combined to dis with Dassault's programme, so Dassault is a French defence firm, um, and the programme that they combined with was Neuron, spelt N-Euro-N, uh, which, as I say, was done by Dassault. And the collaboration is generally through sharing of information, and one can only expect, considering that the two look so alike, that the technology being implemented does go in a similar innovative direction. And in any case, the collaboration, it's not exactly new. After all, uh, back, I think, 2006, I want to say, um, there was Anglo-French collaboration on the uh, Telemos Wither project, which was uh, a similar sort of style of combat UAV. So, and they both look pretty similar to both Neuron and Tyrannus. In any case, um, Tyrannus is currently, uh, in regard to specifications, at a 32-foot wingspan and 30-foot length. Um, it's an interesting concept because it looks futuristic, but other than that, what's, you know, quite notable about it is that it is somewhat smaller than its predecessors. Protector, I think, that's Repo, um, only has a, well, not only, it's got a wingspan of 60-odd feet, so pretty much double uh, Tyrannus, and it's about 40 feet long, so the lower profile of Tyrannus means a lower radar cross-section, and it generally does have a, uh, I guess you'd say, a more slick design, give it, giving it a lower radar cross-section anyway, um, but it means it's pretty much inherently superior in regard to stealth capabilities to uh, the last generation of drones. Also, its exterior seems to be composed of more composite materials, so that's going to also lower uh, radar cross-section as well. So, while Tyrannus, for the moment, is only a demonstrator, the major question is, would it ever enter service as a sort of next-gen UAV? So, many speculate about the usefulness of an unmanned vehicle like Tyrannus, considering that uh, the imported American combat UAV models, like Protector, Reaper, um, carry out their function perfectly well, and the concepts really are fairly similar fundamentally. Fly high, uh, make targets, do a strike. Protector does carry out its function perfectly well, but I would generally disagree that Tyrannus is a useless project. If it were to enter service, it would be after 2030, most likely. It would probably maintain some similar characteristics like shape um, being controlled by a human operator. Yet beyond superior payload and avionics, it probably would have superior unmanned software, given that its technological advantages come from it being difficult to detect, meaning it can operate in hostile territory, um, and I think they were saying that the uh, unmanned technology on board can actually uh, sort of avoid uh, surveillance, I guess you'd say waves, so radar, things like that. Um, in any case, uh, the technological advantages come from it being difficult to detect in hostile territory. It can carry out surveillance for more extended periods of time and make targets and gather intelligence in order to successfully carry out strikes, as a lot of UAVs also do. But the real crux of the system is the ability to carry out superior functionality unmanned, and the ability to do it in a far stealthier manner than any other UAV ever seen to the world, to the point that BAE Systems uh, even stated in 2014 that it was the most technologically advanced aircraft the UK has ever designed and built. Moreover, UAVs like Predator, the drone, run on a piston engine. And I think uh, Protector, so Reaper, runs on a turboprop engine. Tyrannus doesn't. Tyrannus runs on the Rolls-Royce Ardor, 
which is a turbo fan. I think it's dry, so that means it's no afterburner in order to make it more stealthy. Um, but in any case, it is jet powered. All in all, Tyrannus does seem like a brilliant system, um, but beyond futuristic looks, its development is significant due to the unmanned system being implemented on this stealth UAV vehicle. Uh, its improved and mostly automated maneuverability makes it a far fiercer adversary when entering enemy territory, and that will only improve as it's, you know, put through more innovation processes if it ever enters service. So, the unfortunate, I would say, thing about the project and a lot of unmanned projects is that there is significant controversy around the program, uh, around the use of unmanned systems. So detractors might say that the unmanned systems uh, are dangerous. They envision a world similar to that of the Terminator. Many fear that militaries are giving these pretty potent machines uh, too much control and cooperation ability, particularly within, as I say, this cooperational and coordinated battle space, as militaries and defence firms around the world attempt to move into a state where mosaic warfare, which, for those who don't know, is the use of technology in order to create a randomised, uh, harder-to-predict, uh, multi-component tactical uh, strategy. So, function of technology occurs as a web, and technologies communicate together as a web, rather than this sort of chain that one has in order to achieve an objective. As mosaic warfare is more directly aimed for, and technologies communicate with each other in a manner that's directly designed to confuse and, and confuse and hinder the human strategist on the other side, uh, many detractors would say that that's quite a dangerous thing because it's directly uh, designed to confuse humans. The movement as well towards uh, technology to control the mission rather than just the aircraft flight is new. While it's got a lot of very valuable t potential uses, it will continue to have its doubters, and that goes for pretty much all unmanned technology being used in a military context. Yet, both the firms involved and the MOD assure the public that the human element is still absolutely present. Humans are fundamentally the ones carrying out the strikes, and the unmanned technologies are merely stepping stones to a state where all human operators have to focus on is whether or not to make the strike. So they can really dedicate all of their brain power to the stuff that matters, the tactical component. Moreover, many claim that systems like Tyrannus will make war uh, more ethical, in fact, as the human operators are given more information to make more informed decisions with weapons that are more precise, which will reduce collateral damage, and systems that maximise an operator's ability to think about strategic and tactical value in carrying out a strike, rather than having to uh, split focus with UAV operation. In any case, we shall see what happens, but I think we can all agree that UAVs like Tyrannus seem to be pretty amazing technology, uh, and it really will be interesting to see how they fare up against New, uh, newer UAV concepts, which I will be looking at in the next video. Thank you very much.